All right, guys. So today we are back. Hope you guys had a good, fun, long weekend. Uh, let's see what else we got going on today. Right now, I see the market is. If we look at the spy here, spy is down a little bit in pre market after dropping on Friday, is what I'm seeing right now. Uh, let's see what else we get. What's up, Pawn? What's up, Wesley? M.A. Yair. All right, so it's the September slump. Yes, I understand this might be holiday music, and that's all right. All right, so we're back here, team. Down a little bit today in stocks, uh, it looks like, in general. You know, Spy's mostly flat. Uh, other stuff's kind of down, but... Well, the dollar's going up because the market's dipping down some, so, like, the Dixie moves inversely to the market itself. So, like, the dollar index is moving up because the the, the rest of the market is moving down. Yeah, we'll see if the September slump crashes the market. So tomorrow, uh, we have GameStop and C3 earnings. All right, guys. Everyone knows that the market crashed them some tip over. Maybe the elders in the market have a different dream this time. Yeah, I mean, generally, one of the interesting parts of the market is that sometimes the market is pretty contrarian to what you think might actually happen here. So a lot of the time, the market could move like in a contrarian way relative to what everybody thinks is going to happen. And so everybody thinks the market's going to crash in September. It's the September slump. It's the historical weak part of the market, uh, weak part of the year of the market. Uh, and part of me thinks that the market might do well in September. Again, I'm not saying it's going to because historically, you know, if you look at like September trading, generally it's pretty bad. You know, generally the market dips down. I think on average, the, the broader markets lose over 1% uh, in September. And so it's definitely not a good part of the year. But again, the market can be contrarian. And a lot of people are expecting the slump this year in September. And so maybe we'll get a run up. Uh, I have no idea. Let me know what you guys think in chat. Um,
Yeah, this is like holiday music, man. Michael Burry was right. I mean, in what way? The market certainly hasn't crashed. You know, again, the, the question regarding Burry. Yeah, I mean, again, I I hear people like I hear people say Burry was right, Burry was right, but like number one, the date of record for that Burry trade was June thirtieth. We don't actually know when he entered the trade. If he entered it at June thirtieth, he's down big. All right. Uh, if he didn't enter it at June thirtieth, and he entered it at some higher part, <clears throat> which is where he shorted the market, then maybe he's up. But the market is not down that much at all. Like if you look at the spy here. Like <laughs> the market is right around the yearly highs here, guys. Like, again, just to put this into perspective, here's the yearly highs. This is where we are. OK, so the market is not incredibly weak right now. Uh, it's definitely been pretty strong over the last week or two. Uh, if you look at just the broad market here. This is the run up we've made over the last few days. Again, this was the 17th of August. So really the last couple of weeks have been very strong in market activity. Look at these gains. This is the last two weeks. Um, and yeah, we slumped before that. But again, it looks like we're just continuing this upward trend. You know, so like if we really look at this trend here. I mean, that looks like a pretty obvious trend that I think a lot of people are going to see. Um, I think that's kind of what we're in right now. It's definitely no crash yet. Uh, but again, maybe the September market will affect it. Um, All right, so again, we got the spy dipping down. 450 might be a bounce level. I'm also going to try to day trade. Uh, I'm probably going to day trade some in futures as well as toss today. USA is stagflation. There's fears of higher Fed rates. Maybe. Yeah, nobody knows. Again, I, market can be contrarian a lot of the time, so... That's what I'm assuming we get, but like, who really knows, you know? Yeah, nobody reminded me about LSU losing to Florida State. Nobody freaking remind me. All right. Uh, I, I thought people were overconfident with Daniels. Um, he's all right, but he chokes under pressure, I think, you know. And uh, I think Florida State was good, man. You know, they were like number eight ranked, but they destroyed us. And again, it really got to a point where you know, the margin by which they beat us is, looks bad for LSU. You know, it's unfortunate. But, uh, but yeah. Astros, I think, I think, what are they in their series with the Yankees? Are they still in their series with the Yankees? 
Uh, they're with the Rangers. I mean, uh, we're beating the Rangers. The Rangers just fell off, man. They were really highly ranked. They were competing with us for the division, you know, uh, earlier. But at this point in time, the Rangers have fell off. They still don't have Degrom. Um, you know, their pitching is, you know. And I was kind of rooting for the Rangers, too. I mean, I'm rooting for the Astros more, but, like, I was still kind of rooting for the Rangers. The Astros are going to take their division easily now, though. I mean, the only real competition they have – or, no, the uh, – oh, I'm sorry. The Mariners are up there. Um, we're pretty much tied with the Mariners. I mean, I won't be mad if, like, Julio Rodriguez and the, the Mariners win, but I'd definitely like the Astros to win. Yeah, I saw the movie. Um, yeah, let me see this. So, you know, like I see all these other traders, right? And even like some competing traders and they're trying to make it like, bro, like my channel, I don't want to be a day trading guru, man. I never have, like, I never wanted to sell a course. I've never wanted to sell a service. Like, Again, a lot of people are claiming to be more profitable than they ultimately are in order to sell you courses, you know, and like they're using things like like whatever they want to, you know, they're using things like withdrawals, you know, um, from funded account programs as, as a way to critique others. And like the reality of it is funded account programs are incredibly useful. But my TOS account has been has had 50k in it for a while now, and it's just kind of one of those things where it's like funded account programs are great. I'm sponsored by Top Step. They are genuinely a great option, especially if you don't have the equity. But like, I don't necessarily need to get funded. I never have, man. You know, like I don't need to get funded. You know, I've been funded. I it, it would be misleading for me if I told you I did. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't know. I mean, hey, let people talk. But we don't really need to get funded. We've been funded for years in toss. Uh, twins can't beat the, uh, beat the Rangers in that last series. Canada rate decision today. Is the Bank of Canada interest rate decision today? Again, like, my big thing is, like, I don't want to be a day trading guru. Like, I just don't want to be a day trading guru. Like, I don't want to sell a course on day trading and, like, focus on that. Like, what I fell in love with is just broad economics and, like, markets. Like, I love the stock market. I love broad economics. That's what I want to cover here on my channel. Real estate, economics, and, and the broad stock market. Yeah, we day trade, and I love day trading for sure. But, like, we're definitely not, like, a day trading guru claiming to be the most profitable person ever, you know? Um let me see. So do we have, uh, so we have European PPI drop today. I don't see any Canada stuff. We've got Australian interest rate decision. Lagarde is speaking right now, actually. Um, European S&P composite PMI and services PMI. We got uh, CB employment trends at 10, factory orders, durables. But that's it. We don't really have anything else today. So I don't think Canada's interest rate decisions today. Uh, I know tomorrow we have non-manufacturing and services PMI at 945 and 10. So like that'll be big. Non-manufacturing and services PMI. 
tomorrow is the Bank of Canada rate decision, not today. So tomorrow, Wednesday, Wednesday, September 6th is the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. Again, not today. Thursday, we got some stuff going on. Uh, but yeah, like really, we're going to be covering um, this this year. They've got GameStop and, and C3 earnings tomorrow. So tomorrow we got GameStop and C3 earnings. And that'll be huge. We got some um, big stuff coming next week. So this week's not the bu busiest, but next week we got some stuff coming out. I'm definitely grabbing Top Step this year. Going to learn to trade futures. Yeah, Top Step's dope, dude. Uh, it really is useful, man. Like, it really is genuinely useful. Like... The reason for top step is like, listen, if you don't have that much money, like it's incredibly beneficial to, again, I think most traders are going to lose. It's something I'm very honest about, right? Like I could take the whole, Hey, you'll get rich. You know, look at me, I'm getting rich, which is mostly, you know, whatever. But, uh, or I could just be honest with you and tell you, Hey, most traders lose on top step because most day traders lose money. It's not about top step or not. Most day traders lose, right? So it doesn't matter if they're trading on TOS or they're trading on top step. Most day traders lose money. But what I always tell people is that it's a lot cheaper to lose on top step than it is to put up, you know, 50K yourself and, and risk that 10K yourself, 12, 8, 4K yourself. You know, it's a lot cheaper on top step. And so that's going to get you that experience in the market for cheap. That's the, that's the value of it. And again, I'm not going to plug it right now. But it's useful. Uh, TLRY acquired eight beer brands from Anheuser Busch. See, but what's weird is like, why are they delving into beverages? If you're a cannabis company, stay a cannabis company. Like delving into beverages doesn't seem like the right move. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Trying to diversify. Yeah, we'll see if we hit the September slump again. Here's the SPY right now. And then here's Tesla. Tesla right at that previous closing price level, like sitting right here at that previous close. The SPY just dipped under the volume weighted average price. So we have now fallen under the VWAP here. Diversify. I, I get it. I mean, I'm not mad at it. But yeah, I don't think we're going to repeat that craze though, Chris. I've talked about cannabis stocks for a while now. And again, people get weird because canna cannabis is kind of a polarizing issue. I don't think it should be, but like cannabis is a polarizing issue. Again, I don't think it should be, right? Like I think the reality of it is, is that a lot of the people hating on cannabis are the same people that are drinking beer during football games. The same people who are drinking, you know, uh, you know, uh, scotch at night. You know what I mean? Like a lot of these people are, are, are getting inebriated on something that is far more objectively harmful than cannabis. Yet when cannabis legalization comes into play, they, they scream, oh, legalize another drug. Oh, no. It's like, dude, alcohol kills so many people, dude. Uh, nicotine, uh, cigarettes kill hundreds of thousands of people a year, which is something that cannabis just doesn't do. And so in terms of like objective, like toxicity, alcohol, nicotine, cigarettes, you know, so much worse. And when you put that argument out, like nobody can really say anything. And it really is a way that the pharmaceutical industry is keeping it illegal for a reason. They're paying your politician, your favorite politicians, you know, millions of dollars over time. Uh, to keep it illegal so that because they understand like hey people might not need your pain medicine 
if cannabis is legal. They might not need that your pain medicine. You know, cannabis, no physical withdrawal symptoms. If they want to quit, they can quit without much problem. Like in the end, that's the big fear for them. And that's why they pay lobbyists so much money to go lobby against it and keep it illegal and pay politicians. Uh, that's what happens, unfortunately. Um, unfortunate, but but yeah. But the problem, again, the whole point I'm trying to make here, though, is that regarding cannabis stocks is that I'm not a I'm not super optimistic regarding them. Like both sides of the political spectrum have said they they uh, said that they were going to come out and legalize it and push for legalization when they hold both seats, uh, both sides. Uh, they've come out and said, yeah, we hold both sides. We're going to come out and legalize it. And then it never happens. And why do you think it doesn't happen is because they put out bills that they know the other side is never going to approve. Right. Like it's very sneaky. Like they put out bills. They know the other side is never going to approve. Right. They know the the other side is not going to go for that. Right. And they do it intentionally knowing that, you know, they could put out a much more reasonable thing and, and have baby steps toward legalization and probably be legalized by now. Why do you think they don't? It's because they're getting too much PAC money from lobbyists, anti-cannabis lobbyist groups, unfortunately, is what it is. And uh, again, that makes me very that I lack confidence in the cannabis sector because of that. I'm not putting my money into cannabis stocks. I just don't think. I've heard for five, six, seven years now since I've been interested in the stock market that cannabis was going to get legalized every every single year. People say it's going to get legalized. Uh, it never does. And it just ends up staying illegal. Um, you know, usually what happens is like the same people that are like, yeah, we're going to legalize it now. They end up they end up just kind of never they, they end up just kind of turning away from it and not saying anything about it. You probably after they get that pack money check, you know, Uh yeah i'm not really i'm not judging you if you use cannabis i'm really not i don't personally you know use it but i'm certainly not judging you if you use it you know um just like I don't think we should judge anybody that has a, you know, uh, has beer, that drinks beer at night when they get off of work or whatever it is. I don't think we should judge any of it. So, uh, my big thing is if, if it's not hurting anybody else, which this is certainly one of those things, then legalize it, tax it. Um, now Delta Eight is a derivative of cannabis you know what's what's specifically illegal is something is is a something called delta 9 thc right it's the conventional cannabis um you know molecule or, or chemical that you know historically everybody knows delta 9 thc that's like the main one right well that that is specifically illegal delta 9 and in, in a lot of different places right and so what they started doing after the farm bill which legalized all other variants of it like all basically delta 9 is illegal but all other variants of it are legal right and so what they started doing is they started isolating different chemicals in the thc plant that had some of the similar effects but just didn't classify as delta 9 thc right so there's like delta 10 there's delta 8 there's all these different um, isolates of cannabis that ultimately do the same thing. Um, and the reason I know this is because I was thinking about starting a business based off of it. I didn't end up doing it, but I learned a lot about it when I did. Um, and, and so basically it is legal in some form pretty much all across the country. Uh, but which makes it even more silly that like, you know, they're demonizing Delta nine, which is probably the most natural part for humans, you know, outside of these weird isolates that, you know, I don't know. No, it's not synthetic. It's 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 an isolate, is what it is. What do you think about Neo? I'm skeptical of Neo because of just the price action we've seen from it over the last couple of months really this thing has dropped from $16 all the way down to 10 you know 
It was at sevens early in the year, but prior to that, like back in September of last year, it was at 23s, 22s. So it's dipped a lot. It's at a rough time. Um, no, I've never heard of it, James. I'm, I'm married with kids, brother. You know, I've got kids. I'm married. Like, I don't hear about it, any of that stuff. I, I'm, I'm kind of outside of that realm, you know. Yeah, so spy back over VWAP still sitting at 450.20s. 450.20s on the spy. Uh, look at Tesla dip. Tesla down at 245s here. So Tesla testing that previous closing price looks weak. Yeah, I think that's there's a chance. Y'all do me a favor, hit that like button. Let's let's run these likes num uh, these these numbers up here if we can. All right, guys. So, yeah, we do have C3 AI tomorrow. Can't see Neo hitting all-time high for years, if ever. Yeah, that's kind of my thing. I'm, I'm just skeptical of it, brother. Like, that's my big thing. Um, I'm just skeptical. Let me do a poll here. I don't think I've done a poll right now. Um, does the market slump in September? going to be the question of the poll. Yes or no, vote on that poll. Let me know what you guys think. Does the market slump in September? Yeah, remember, it's Tuesday, guys. The market is... Uh, yesterday was Labor Day. Honestly, I super enjoyed my day off, dude. Um, here, I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to go to a bathroom break. While I'm gone, vote on the poll. Vote on the poll. Does the market slump in September? I'll be back. I'm going to go to the restroom real quick.
All right, we're back. And so let's see what people said regarding the September slump. Uh, market is dropping this morning. I sold everything in late July. Uh, Yeah, let's see. Uh, again, I, I think the market can be contrarian a lot of the time. So, like, the market can move against what a lot of people think. And a lot of the market thinks the market's going to dump this month. Uh, it, I'm not sure if we will. So far, like, let's take a look at the market so far on its only day of September prior to today. If we look up, like, a daily chart here. So, September started Friday. So here's the first day of September, which is, you know, on par with the September slump. So this is the first day of September on a daily chart right here. So again, the question is, do we continue to fall in September? I'm not sure. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends. Like, my channel has evolved to be a more kind of economic uh, market-based channel like we're not trying to be day trading gurus and I think some people like their dream is to be rich day trading and I get it but like it's not really what I'm trying to do here anymore I'm not really messing with penny stocks either um, I just want to cover the broad economy and market like that's like that's what the channel has evolved to and uh, again people could like it dislike it uh, most of the time the people that say they dislike it I've never actually seen them before you know, so it's like a lot of the time they're either creating fake accounts or they're just trying to be negative. Uh, and that's OK. I mean, listen, let them vent however they want to vent, I guess. But uh, but yeah. If it dumps on the first trading day of September just because it's September. Well, I don't think it's just because September. I think that it's more nuanced than that. I think it's going to be hard to figure out what happens uh, and why it's dropping. I think we're. I think we're down a little bit, but I also think the market is up a lot. So, you know, if we zoom out here, the market's had a pretty good couple weeks. So, like, here was the 21st, right? So, we'll just use that for a two-week gauge. The market has pushed up a lot in two weeks. So, like, here's the market. It's It's been up a lot over the last couple weeks. That's what I love about this channel. Yeah, I mean, again, I think... Uh, I think we grow we've been growing pretty fast and like people want to critique us like they want to they want to talk smack about us but like they don't really have any justification to um and so uh what they start doing is they start trying to insult my day trading you know <laughs> and it's like bro y'all can insult it all you want man i'm not even claiming to be a good day trader i don't even care about any of that stuff i mean i day trade i, I love day trading but like i'm not claiming to be anything i don't want to be another guru i think there's enough gurus out there you know um, I'd rather just tell people, hey, we're not experts and just give everything away for free and not sell a course and not claim to be experts and not charge. And, and probably, you know, again, I think when you sell a course, what happens is that you end up starting to fabricate your gains, right? You end up starting to fabricate your gains because you need credibility, right? You're selling a course, right? So you need credibility. So like you start to fabricate, fabricate. And I think there's some people that are more gullible to that type of behavior than others. Uh, but like, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Like, again, my, like I said, I've kind of fallen in love with economics and just the broad market. Uh, my swing trades generally do much better than my day trades anyway. And so, you know, appreciate the love guys for sure. Yeah. We'll see if it's a short day. I don't know. Um,
So Canada PPI. Canada PPI uh, drops tomorrow. Um, so yeah, Canadian PPI drops tomorrow. The Canadian interest rate decision is going to be... I'm pretty sure. Let me make sure. Yeah, Canadian interest rate decision. Right, that's tomorrow. Okay, yeah, the Bank of Canada rate decision is going to be at 10 a.m. tomorrow. They're expecting 5%. Or they're expecting a skip or a pause. Uh, the last time they did, they were at 5%. They're, they're holding it at 5% is what it looks like. Uh, and so Canada doing a 5% pause. Yeah, today we do have... Uh, Yeah, we got European PPI. It's not Can Canadian. It's European PPI. Just came out at 5 a.m. this morning, so a few hours ago. Uh, yeah, they expected minus 0.6. They only showed minus 0.5, so a little bit higher. Their year over year was at minus 7.6%. They ended up showing minus 7.6%. So pretty much flat data there. We do have the mortgage data coming out tomorrow as well. Expectations are 7.31%. Yeah, and aren't uh, aren't yields up right now? If I remember correctly, right? Aren't aren't yields up? Haven't yields increased overnight? I might be wrong, but I think they have, right? ATM issues for JP Morgan. Yeah, I heard about them. I heard about like people weren't able to take money out. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. JP Morgan's not really down that much. you got beat up dude don't even remind me Wasn't there a revised, uh, revised job report where the data was a lot worse? I think there's an expectation to pause for the F, uh, for the Fed rate hike. Well, there's always been an expectation for a pause, I'm pretty sure. Um, and so the, the the expectation for that pause went up even more. You know, if you look at the... the um, here is the probabilities for a pause, which is very high right now. 93% of people think we're going to pause the next cycle and that's september 20th it's in 15 days about two weeks from now we're going to do the rate hike decision so hey what's up maybe what's up quantum what's up tf 
A little worried about Japan. Why? When the announcement of a pause reversed the expectation of September slump, not necessarily. I mean, everybody already thought everybody's already thought we were going to pause for the last couple, you know, really the last month. Everybody's overwhelmingly expecting a pause anyway, and so. All right, so Australia rejected a crypto regulation bill. Will the Cybertruck come out this year is the question. Man, this guy took a Tesla Model S Plaid with a track package flat on the Autobahn. Dude, this dude just went 300 miles an hour. I think it's miles. It might be kilometers. If it's kilometers, it's a little bit slower, but still. 312s. Oh my gosh, dude. 312s is freaking sketch. Because 312s. Man, so the Tesla Plaid Max is out at about 320. This has got to be kilometers. Let me look if I can zoom in a little bit. I can't see. Let me see if I can fix this. This has got to be kilometers, though. Yeah, it's got to be. I think maxed out at 320, so it's got to be kilometers. All right, so it's still about 200 miles an hour, about 199 miles an hour. That's still ridiculously quick, man. Again, my I don't want a plaid, bro. I, I want a plaid, don't get me wrong, but like the other part of me is like, dude, I'd never get one, dude. I'll just, you know. Right, for sure, Quantum. I think the problem with regulating crypto is that it's going to turn into just another version of the stock market, and we already have that, you know? So like one of the benefits of crypto is that there's no red tape.
All right, so again, look at Tesla back at the 245s here. Spy up to 450s. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's, it's it has to be kilometers, realistically, is what it is. It has to be kilometers. Um, and yeah, so again, today we don't really have much. Uh, we got, like, tomorrow we got some stuff dropping. But today the economic data is slow. I don't actually think we have anything dropping today. Let me see. Uh, in terms of economic data, let me look at uh, Market Watch. Factory orders at 10. That's it. Minus 2.3 expectation is all we see here for factory orders. Um. We'll cover factory orders, but not the biggest release. Tomorrow we've got uh, ISM non-manufacturing and services PMI. Uh, so services PMI for August drops tomorrow, as well as ISM non-manufacturing PMI. Yeah, a little bit slower. We'll try to day trade some stocks at the opening bell and futures at the opening bell, too. All right, guys. So again, Tesla back up there. I might day trade the spy a little bit too. I just got to find a good setup today. But the spy pushing towards the previous closing price. You can see the previous closing price of 451.20s here. So we're up there. Uh, yeah. If I win on top step and get funded account, would that mean I can quit my job or school and begin to trade? full time of course not i mean i mean listen dude like again that's a that's a silly question man that's a silly question dude and and for like you know you have to understand why you know uh and i i got a feeling you're being sarcastic i hope you're being sarcastic because of course not like again i've, I've told people this once i'll say it again don't ever quit your job to trade unless you have years of sample size data years of sample size data right quitting your job is a horrible 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 idea you know and you should never do it you never get a loan for trading never quit your job for trading if you don't have enough money to trade then freaking work you know save don't you know yeah yeah just be smart, man. You know. Again, I'm not even a day trading guru. Like my my favorite thing about my channel is that I'm not a day trading guru. Like I don't sell a course. I don't claim to be an expert. I don't act like a guru. I don't charge for content whatsoever. And um, a lot of people fabricate to just to sell courses. I don't need to. You know.
All right. What else we got going on today? But yeah, we'll see if the market gives us something today. I guess I'm going to be looking to short the spy back up to 450 60s right now. we got again we got the market pushing up we don't really have enough liquidity to really take any big trades right now i think yeah we got some ecb members speaking All right, guys, we're at 450.60s right now on the SPY. Look at the queue. So we can look at uh, – here's the queue. We also got AMC that we might want to watch today. The queue is looking a little bit more red than the SPY itself. but So NASDAQ and tech are kind of lagging a little bit behind. Here's AMC. AMC back up to 13s. I mean, it's got another chance to do something today. We'll see if it does. Tesla, again, Tesla is slightly green on the day up to 246. NVIDIA team is is down pretty big over the last couple of days uh still sitting at 480s though and with how crazy big the range is on nvidia i don't think this necessarily means anything um and so yeah we'll see if we get anything good but i did the complete opposite a loan for trading yeah i mean you you gotta understand a lot of people just don't have that much money kaylee and so uh you know, they, they try all these desperate things and it's usually just a terrible idea. I think, again, I partially blame day trading guru culture where it's like you got people that are trying to sell courses, 
right? And by trying to sell courses, they exaggerate not only how easy it is, but how much they specifically make, right? Like most of these guys are making money from selling courses over trading by far, you know? But like they act like it's from trading, so they have an easier time selling courses, you know? When they do that, you got naive traders who eat it up. They eat it up. They think they're about to just get rich, right? They think they're about to just get rich and ride off into the sunset. And, uh, you know, very rarely is it like that. Most of the time, people just lose. It's one of the reasons, like I said, like I'm not a day trading guru. Like we day trade, we swing trade, we invest. Really, my swing trade's probably a little bit better than my day trades. But I don't have to prove anything to anybody because it doesn't really matter. Like, it really just doesn't matter. Like, my, my channel is more of an economic channel. Like, we cover CPI, Jerome Powell uh, earnings, you know? It's not like we're just putting out day trading content, you know? Um, but, like, again, I think that, that type of content ends up hurting traders sometimes, man. If, when you when you act like you are you can just get rich in the market, right? People, people, and take it, people desperately want that to be true. Like, if you're struggling financially... You desperately want that to be true. You wish it was true, right? And so if and it's kind of really hard to talk a trader out of that too. But again, what you got to understand if you're a trader is that generally, most of the time you don't pick your trading style. All right. A lot of the time your trading style picks you. Okay. So like you're going to have some people that want to day trade and they turn into swing traders. You're going to have people that want to swing trade and they turn into day traders. You're going to have people who want to day trade and they trade options. You're going to have people who want to day trade stocks and they end up trading futures. Right. And so it kind of, you gravitate towards what you do well and what you start to do well, you do more of, and eventually you turn into that. But the point is, you know, day trading is difficult. A large majority of people lose at it. And I would rather tell people the truth, which is that it's difficult. And a large majority of people lose at it than fabricate gains to sell courses, you know? And uh, it is what it is. Um, again, hopefully traders aren't taking too much risk in their accounts. Somebody said taking a loan out. You should never take a loan. You should never quit your job. Um, you know, you, you develop a sample size and you see how you perform. You paper trade first. You know, and paper trading profits are going to be much different than real profits as well. And so it just takes time, guys. It's not something that happens overnight. It really is like a conditioning thing where you do it over and over and over again until it becomes second nature. Right. And that takes time. It's not something that just happens. The market really wants to go up. Just look at the Dixie. Well, the Dixie is going to do the opposite of what the market wants, right? So the market might want the mar uh, to go up, but the Dixie is going to go up if the market goes down. So like if the Dixie and the dollar index is pushing up, it usually means the market is weak. And that's kind of what you see today. Again, here's the Dixie, which is, again is going to do the opposite of what the market does. Here's the SPY. Now, maybe it's not going to always have a perfect correlation, but generally... If the Dixie's moving up, the dollar index is moving up. The, the market, the broad markets are going down. Uh, there's an inverse correlation for a few different reasons with the dollar index and markets, mostly because like the dollar index, uh, as the dollar index rises, that means inflation can be rising as well. So like there's, as the inflation goes up, the dollar index goes up and that can kind of be seen as a negative thing, sparking pessimism in markets. Uh, so it's not really something where... Like the dollar index is going up is a strong sign for markets. It's actually the opposite. If the Dixie is moving up, it's usually a weak sign for markets. Uh, and with that said, the dollar index is up big today. Um, yeah, I'm not what what I'm not sure what the spam is or what the purpose of the spam is, but we're just gonna put you guys in timeout. Good day to you. Uh, Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. Again, the question today is like, are we going to see a September slump? Looking at our poll number, 71% of people say yes. 29% of people say no. No September slump this year. And again, I really don't know.
All right, guys. Uh, we got a little bounce up at the Dixie. We'll see if the markets drop now or if the SPY and the market are going to have a positive correlation here. I think NVIDIA is something to watch today, too. NVIDIA, very volatile. Uh, moves a bunch. All right, guys, so we get SPY back up to almost 451. We'll see if it holds. I'm looking at NVIDIA also, guys. Again, NVIDIA is big. Tomorrow, we have some big earnings reports like C3 AI, GameStop. Pretty big, relevant reports here. All right, so we can pop it back up a little bit. Again, I am going to be day trading some on TOS today. Uh, Uh, again, NVIDIA sitting right at 480s, but NVIDIA has been on a rise here. So if we look at NVIDIA, we can look at the kind of trend that we see here. So far, we're back up to 480s. I think there might be an argument for like a downward uh, or an upward trend short term. So let's look at like, a, let's put up like an hourly chart, 30 minute chart maybe. Um, I think if we zoom out still, we have a little bit of a longer term trend. Here's an hourly chart. And so I think we do have somewhat of a trend, although it's, it's definitely scattered. You know, maybe like a longer term trend there. Sorry, my, my drawings are obviously bad. All right. Uh, y'all wanna i'm gonna go ahead and make this post you want to do me a favor heart this post for good luck you want to heart this post there you go what are your thoughts about forex forex is the wild west bro forex is sketchy dude uh, again i'm not trying to trade forex forex is great forex actually has one of the like larger markets like the forex market is freaking huge 
like there's so many interests like i guess it's worldwide so there's so many more interested like people interested in forex but like for me i'm just not number one i think every time i've tried forex uh it, i've kind of um every time i've tried forex the liquidity and like the overall volatility was always low so it was always hard to find like volatile movements in forex and maybe i just suck at finding it like again maybe i just suck at finding it um uh, you know so i mean maybe maybe that's the case but it, it's it seems like most people trading forex should just be trading futures right a lot of people are just trading like the they're, they're trading broad index funds like the s p or the nasdaq and forex where it's like you could do it in futures there's less red tape in futures it's easier to get done it's easier to find funded account programs uh and, and so i don't know why people trade forex but again maybe i'm just maybe i'm just you know maybe i just don't know um Yeah, what I posted on Twitter is the truth, which is that what's funny is that I'm not a day trading guru. I don't sell courses. I don't claim to be an expert. I don't have to exaggerate gains to sell courses. Like I still day trade, but I focus on the economy and half for years. Not sure why people label me a day trading gu guru just to critique, but hey, you know, cheers to you guys. <laughs> um, again, watching NVIDIA right now, NVIDIA had almost 482s. AI forums on the 13th. Which one? I know Tesla AI Day is on the 30th of September. So Tesla AI Day is at the end of this year. Do you think the dollar index is losing steam? It's in an uptrend. Yeah, I saw it's up a lot. Like I saw the Dixie is up a ton right now. So I see I see the Dixie moving up a lot. I, I don't know if it's losing steam or not. It, it, if it loses steam, that generally means the market's going to go up. And so if you think the index... Uh, if you think the uh, Dixie is losing steam, maybe there's a buy trade argument. I don't know. Um, you are a life guru. Hey, we try. Yeah, I hear that, Alexis. What's a dragon con? I don't even know what that is. Oh, is it is it Game of Thrones? Dude, I hope these, this freaking strike is not affecting Game of Thrones, though, dude. It can't. Hopefully it should. It's like a pop culture convention. Okay, gotcha, Alexis. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm a, I love Game of Thrones, but... Um... Yeah, I mean, that's silly, Randy. Restricting YouTubers from trading stocks is hilarious. You know, that's just not reasonable at all, bro. But hey, you know. Uh, it's all good. Uh, German, British pound, Japanese yen pair is usually volatile. Yeah, I don't know. I might be wrong. Forex is absolutely insane volatility at random points. I can wipe out accounts. Yeah, again, I, it's, I don't really trade it, so I don't really know. Again, I, I'll, I'll very openly admit I have no idea what I'm talking about for X, Y, Z, you know. Man, they got a 15-year-old saying, I had 90% win rate last month. Like, bro, again, if your guru is a teenager with braces trying to act like he's some stock market expert, run away, guys, run away.
car dealership guys that we've had customers who made 350k a year and had 500 credit scores you'd never be able to tell i disagree I, I think he's exaggerating here i don't think anybody that makes 350k a year is gonna have a 500 credit score 500 credit score like you gotta do some freaking work dude i'm um, maybe 600 is like there maybe like 600 credit score maybe right but a 500 credit score you almost have to try to hurt your credit if you got a 500 you know like 600 might have been more believable 500 eh, you know how, i don't even know how you can get that done like you gotta work to keep your credit score at 500 um Yeah, I see R.I.P. Josh on Twitter. But, like, who are they talking about? Oh, I don't even know who this is. You'll be surprised? Yeah, maybe. I do cash advances as a loan broker, and I have people doing a million a year with 480 credit scores. Very possible, but how, dude? The only way I could ever imagine that you get like a 480 credit score is like if you if you take on like somebody said you take on all this debt, you finance a car, you finance a home, you finance a bunch of credit cards, and then maybe you get stuck in like drug addiction or something, and then all of a sudden you just kind of stop paying all of it, you know, for like six months, and then maybe that's when you're gonna have that car <laughs> or that 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 score. But it, I think it'd be tough tough to do. What's up, Robert? Hey, good morning, man. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had a credit score that low. You call you watch those crazy losses. Yeah, it's either crypto or forex that causes those big dumps, those big like crashes in markets. Again, y'all hit that like button, guys. We got 83 likes. We can do better than that. Hey, what's up, Shepard? Now my score is in the high. Can't get anything. Too much credit, they say. Too much credit? What do you mean? They just end up not paying cash advances and default them. Looking for merchant cash advances affects our score as a loan shark type of financing program. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think about the Airbnb and BX added? What's BX? Um, what is BX? Blackstone? Yeah, it's up to 108. So when did it, it, it was added to the NASDAQ? When? Again, hit that like button, guys. Bump those numbers up here, team. We got 91 likes. We need about nine more to break 100 likes today. Watching the spy here. I might buy the spy here right now, though. I might buy the spy. We got a double top. All right, there's 50, 75, 100 shares of the spy. So we just bought 100 shares of the spy. 
Let's see if we get a little pop up. Here, we're watching the queue here. The Nasdaq's on the right. Too many credit cards. Tried to get consolidation loan. Too many credit cards. That's weird. I mean, I've got some credit cards, but like, you shouldn't have too many. You know, it could be the average length of time for your credit cards is too low. So like one of the bad things about opening up a credit card is that it'll, it'll, it'll average in your average, like your credit length, like how long you've had credit, right? So it's like, if you're, if your oldest account is 10 years and you, and that's the only account you have, and then you open up an account today, then your, your, your credit life is going to drop from 10 years to five. You know what I mean? And so then that's one of the things that will get you with credit. Yeah. Oh, 11. Ooh, man. 11 is kind of high though, Shepard, for sure. It depends on whether you're paying them off. If you're paying them off every month, it's different, I guess. But you think gold is currently in an uptrend? Uh, It's definitely down today. It's been in an uptrend for the last couple uh, the last few days. Hey, buddy. Really sharp today, man. Love you, buddy. Bye. Have a good day, bud. You feeling okay today? Huh? What? I'm sorry, buddy. I love you, buddy. Have a good day, dude. Yeah, just don't use credit. Uh, the only, like, credit cards are good, but you got to pay them off at the end of every month. One thing that they really like is like if you if you spend a lot on your credit card and then pay it off every month, you know, and it shows you have a high ability to pay. I'm not saying they like it, but that can help. Nothing to do with Tilray, but wait for a dip buy. Yeah, Tilray, I'm just skeptical of. I remember when Tilray was like $400, $300, $200 and something, actually. How much can I give my kid a year tax free? 16 k What, as an employee? Yeah, for sure. I feel you, Shepard. I'm not judging. I really am not, you know. Hmm. Yeah, Dylan. Nice, man. Yeah, you just keep paying it off, dude. Under 12 is not taxable? What do you mean? If somebody makes less than 12K a year? Yeah, well. I don't have that problem. Or I don't have that benefit. I wish I did. Tilray with a dip down to under 3 under the previous closing price. Technically red on the day now. I'm still at the SPY here. Uh, you see, I got 100 shares of the SPY. I might add a little bit more that were towards the bottom. 125 shares. Plan is to buy the VIP at the, the dip at the VYP. We'll take 150. All right, so we got 150 shares. Ideally, we'd like to see a little bounce here on the SPY. I'm going to buy in the dip. Yeah, I'm not sure what spouse or children is. I don't think I don't think you can pay your spouse. I think children you can, but uh... All right, so we got 150 shares of the spy, and this is not a small position, guys. Just to put you some perspective into how big this trade is, All right? 150 shares of the spy right now is about sixty-seven and a half thousand dollars. You know, and that's what I always try to tell people. Like people acting like, um, people acting like I uh, like I need to take a withdrawal from a funded account program, or you know, like guys, I've been funded for years. I could either lie and act like I needed to take a withdrawal, or I could just be honest. And you know, I'd rather be honest. I love Top Step. Top step is dope and super useful for traders, especially if you don't have that much equity. But, um, but yeah. 
All right, so we're pretty much flat on the trade here. We got 150 shares of the spy. It's not really, we're not risking 70K either, just to put this into perspective. Like, it's not like we're risking $70,000 here on this trade. It's not going to go to zero. But uh, but that's how much buying power we're using here. I'm just trying to trade with the trend here. I think you can kind of see the little trend on the spy right now. Tax free gift limit. Gift tax exclusion for 23 is 17K or 16 and 2022. What do you mean? So if I spend 17K or less on gifts, I can write it off? I to ask my accountant about that. I'll probably spend something like that a year in gifts. The US bank cash plus attitude go are such a great idea for you high reward cards. So again, we're pretty flat here. Again, we got 150 shares of the spy right now. You spend 17k a year just on gifts. I mean, I'm married, man. You know, so like, I'm not saying I spend 17k a year, but I spend something around like I spend probably five figures, which I think is probably pretty standard. I mean, not standard, but like. I spend some money for sure on gifts and I'd love to write it off. Is the Dixie falling down? Yeah, Dixie just broke highs, opened up a little bit. We'll see what the spy does here. Again, it's, we're not gonna hold this forever and we'll cut it if it starts to look weak. The liquidity is just low in the market right now. All right, so we're letting it test the VWAP here. I want to see if we get a VWAP bounce. That's the whole goal of this trade is to see if we get a VWAP bounce. If not, we'll cut it and we'll come back another time. Again, the dollar index is ripping up. I'm going to probably cut this now. I don't like this. The dollar index is just shooting up too much. Like if we look at the Dixie and usually the SPY and the dollar index are going to have an inverse correlation. And so the dollar index is just shooting up. Look at this. So we're just going to limit our risk. Look at the dollar index breaking highs. Again, this is usually bad for the market. So this usually means the market's going to pull back some. Uh, and so that's why I cut that long trade. We lost like 30 or 40 bucks. It's pretty small. So the dollar index started dipped out a little bit. Again, the Q right at the VWAP here. So I, I'm not sure what we're going to get. The question is, does the market bounce at the VWAP? So again, I'm seeing another post about real estate. They said, believe it or not, house affordability has not changed much in the last 40 years. What got inflated was people's desire for bigger and more luxurious homes. The medium new home house today is almost a hundred square foot or a thousand square foot larger than 40 years ago. The price per square foot in, uh, inflation adjusted. It basically stayed the same. But again, I guess people are wanting larger houses is what I'm uh, lar larger houses is what I'm showing here. Bro, I don't know why people reach out to me wanting to collab with me on a course, dude. Like seriously, like why reach out to me? Like I I really don't want to be a like uh, Honestly, guys, to be honest, if I was going to sell a course, dude, 
I wouldn't hire somebody else to help me build the course. To be honest, like, bro, I already got a bunch of free courses on YouTube. So, like, if I was going to sell a course, dude, um, I wouldn't give anybody a, I wouldn't say, hey, guy, help me come sell a course and I'll give you 30%. I would just keep it all myself. I'm not going to sell a course, right? Like, I've always told people, I'm not trying to be a guru. I don't, I don't want to worry about all that stuff. I'd rather just, you know not be a guru you hear my dog man my dog all right, so the dollar index is pushing up more here. Dixie just broke highs. Again, this will probably drag markets back down. Here's the SPY. So it'll probably drag markets back down. There's 450s on the SPY. Market looks weak. Hey, okay, well, thanks, Polaris. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you, man. This is true. I was just talking to my husband about this. Yeah, it's interesting to watch. AFC running. Does anyone know what the NQ mirrors? It mirrors the Q. It's the NASDAQ. The NQ is the NASDAQ. So you could look at like the Q, which is kind of, it depends on which way you look at it. Like the NASDAQ, the NQ is the NASDAQ 100. All right. So it mirrors the NASDAQ 100. Um, the QQQ mirrors the NASDAQ 100 as well, right? They're all different ways. So when you see QQQ, it's the NASDAQ. Uh, and again, the dollar index still breaking highs. Looks like me cutting that long trade was the right move because look at these big breakdowns here. Down to 450 on the SPY. Let's see if 450 holds, but we are getting volatility here for sure. Look at this movement. Right, they want me to pay for it for sure, Quantum, or they want me to use their platform. But again, if I created a course, which I'm not going to do because again, I really like just want to be a free resource and I've backed myself into a corner where it's like I would get so much heat if I sold a course it's not worth it you know and that's kind of how I'd rather it be you know no I'm not saying I'm never going to come out with my own like software or something like that but like as for like a course or like a mentorship program I'm just not going to do it I could probably make millions from it if I wanted to Guys, I could put out a bunch of sensationalized marketing. I could exaggerate gains. I could act like I was more profitable than I ultimately was and probably make millions selling a course, you know, but I'd rather just be honest and like sleep good and not have to worry about it. Um, I mean, I look at a little bit of both. I watch the QA and the NASDAQ here. There's the SPY. Here's the Q. We could look at the actual E-mini NASDAQ position here, but all of them are kind of dipping down here. We're finally getting a drop in the Dixie and the dollar index. So maybe this could signal a bounce coming soon. But uh, who knows? Maybe we'll try it. We'll take the Q here. It will buy up a little dip here, the Q. All right, so we got 25 shares. Just kind of play with it a little bit here. What is that, Eli? Never heard of it. Fox Corp, 20th, 21st Century Fox. I didn't even know they had a stock, in all honesty. Um, I don't know if they're going to end up in jail. I'm not really against the gurus either. Like, I'm just... Like, one of the things I'll see a lot, right, is like, okay, so, like, my channel is called Beginner Trading. You know, like, we don't sell a course. We don't sell a service. We don't claim to be an expert. We don't charge for content. There's no paywalls behind our content. Even becoming a member doesn't get you anything extra, you know, and we're open and honest about that too. Uh, and so I think because we label it like that, like haters, they can't really critique me on, on anything, right? And so what they end up doing a lot of the time is they try to make me like a day trading guru. They try to say, I'm a better day trader than you. And it's like, okay, maybe you are like, you, you sure got me, you know? <laughs> It's like, bro, we're an economics channel. Like, we cover CPI, jobless claims, like Jerome Powell meetings, earnings. You know, we're mostly covered the stock market and economics. Like, we're not even, like, day trading gurus. We day trade, of course. Like, I day trade every day. I love day trading. But, like, am I claiming to be, like, the greatest day trader of all time? Of course not. And I'd rather be honest about that and sleep good at night than, like, fabricating gains to sell courses, you know? Um, 
and I hope you guys appreciate it. Like we try to make this channel a good place where you can come and like learn, get economic data quick. Like is really what we do. Like we cover this economic data fast so people can avoid paying for other services because we cover economic quickly. Um, that's kind of what I've designed the channel to be. And I love it, man. I, I, again, the channel has grown to what my interests have been. Like, yeah, when I first started the channel, I was like a day trader. So like that's solely what we covered was day trading. Uh, as we evolved, which as like most people in the stock market evolved that way, like, you know, you start off as a day trader and then as your net worth grows, you slowly start to become interested in investing and swing trading and economics. You know, that's what, that's like the normal pattern of most, I would say. Uh, but everybody's different and some people stick with day trading and I love day trading. Um, but everybody's different man. everybody's a little bit different. Why is DAX up today? I'm not positive, but I believe over the next week or so, NVIDIA should drop to 422. We'll see. NVIDIA has been crazy. It's proved a lot of people wrong, too. Like, it's down a lot over the last few days, but, like, it's been up huge amounts. Everything looking pretty red today, though, in, like, my portfolio, which is all right. Yeah, we've got about $40,000 portfolio right now invested. Um... Yeah, another one that's big. Yeah, investors day is fun. Um, so twenty three. So and uh, so C three AI drops their earnings tomorrow. So does so does uh, GameStop as well. So C three AI and GameStop report their earnings tomorrow, which is big. You know uh, that'll be very relevant to watch, pay attention to, keep an eye on. What is it? American Express. Well, most stuff are ignored. Uh, most stuff has been moving up, you know. Um, American Express is actually on a pretty big slump, I would say, over the last couple weeks. But it might be time to buy that dip. I might buy a little bit of this today. I don't know. I don't mind it. I'll take a little piece. American Express is down. It's, it was at 180s or so in July. It's back all the way down to 160 or so. So it's dropped about twenty dollars a share. Uh, you know, yeah, I track bonds as well. Short the E-mini today? Maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, so the Dixie has kind of came right back up. I'm going to just go ahead and sell the Q and just get out small. Uh, but I was hoping the Q might start to break down because if the Q breaks down, the market generally will start to head back up. But that's not what we're getting right now, unfortunately. All right, guys. So again, Dixie still tested highs.
All right, guys. Uh, dollar index just cracked highs again here. And again, let's look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA looking weak today. Is it, is it worth a buy or a sell? I'm not sure what NVIDIA is going to do. Again, NVIDIA, GameStop has earnings tomorrow. Another one that drops earnings that might influence AI is C3, which is symbol AI. You know, it's been pretty flat, but it's all the way up at $30 here. So it's been a pretty big moving stock. It's up a couple hundred percent uh, this year alone. It started off the year at about 10 or 15 bucks. It's now at 30 bucks. So at least up a hundred percent. And that's had some pretty big moves as well. Uh, again, GameStop drops their numbers. AMC has been another one that we're all talking about here after the reverse split. Again, AMC, if you look at it, it's at $13. It actually had a pretty good day on Friday when a lot of other stuff looked weak. So a lot of the rest of the market looked pretty weak on Friday. Well, GameStop still looking pretty strong. Uh, or not GameStop. Well, uh, AMC still looking okay. Uh, again, I'm not saying it's going to continue going up. I really have no idea what this thing's going to do. But um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. What What's a good stock to watch right now? Stock cycles is a thing. The bears are back, baby. I mean... Again, the SPY or the Q are around highs of the year. So if we look at the market here, yeah, that's why I don't understand. People acting like the market's in some state of turmoil or crash is just not accurate. Uh, again, if we look at the – here's the Q. Here's the NASDAQ on the year. And so here's the yearly high, right around 387. We're $10 away from the yearly high here on the, on the NASDAQ here. If we look at the SPY, you get a similar thing here. So, like, again, here's the SPY. You pull up the SPY, you get a similar thing. Uh, we are less than $10 away on the SPY to the yearly high. And so you, we had this little slump, but the market has effectively bounced all the way back from it here. And now, again, the question is, do we hold this week? It is September. And so if there is a bear argument, it's going to be the September slump argument as the market is uh, historically weak in September. And so, again, vote on the poll. Let me know what you guys think. Hit the like button. And again, the question is, Again, my prediction here is going to be a little bit contrarian. Does the market pull back in September? My prediction is the market is flat or slightly green in September, surprising a lot of people. And again, I might be wildly wrong. I certainly don't want you to copy off of me here. But like the reality of it is the market is contrarian a lot of the time. So where a lot of people think the market's going to just fly up and rip up. Uh, or the market think the market, a lot of people think the market's just going to crash down. I think it's important to understand that like the market is contrary and a lot of the time the market doesn't do what everybody thinks it's going to do. Uh, and so in that regard, just be smart, understand, like we don't know what the market's going to give us. Um, and yeah, you just got to be smart. All right, guys. So again, let's see if uh, AMC holds that 13 level. Look at that, the SPY right now. Again, the SPY breaking down. Let's look at the dollar index to see if it's moving up and still flying up here with all this stuff. I'm sure my, my slight break-even or green prediction of the market is going to cause a lot of people 
to disagree with me, and that's all right. Uh, September sale, maybe. Yeah, I'll probably be adding up to stuff, too. I'm just finishing a week off trading due to my bro visiting. No positions for me until I'm properly caught up. Price action. Yeah, hey, all good, dude. Smart way to look at it. Market is only going up sometimes. Some corrections intra week. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I mean, I mean, to be honest, Bo, didn't we all tell the same thing? I mean, guys, listen, I was talking about buying put options on VFS when it was around like, uh, what, what was it at? It was at $93. I was telling people I was thinking about buying put options. Why do you think everybody had that conclusion is because, man, like the way you have to look at it is is like this. Okay, when you start to catch these big volatile moves, it's important to understand it like this, right? Because a lot of traders get trapped, but it's important to understand it. Okay, when you start to have these big volatile moves, when it starts to go like this is really the ideal time to get into these plays, right? When it starts the first jump, the first big percentage move like this is when you kind of want to get in it. Because if you don't get in it at the beginning, you're risking a lot of money, right? So when it first starts to make that run, you can jump in on a dip, right? If it starts to make even more of a parabolic run, like say like VFS in the situation where it went from, uh, like let's put up like a 180 day chart, right? So whenever it went from $11 all the way up to 25, right? And it dipped here, that might be a time to enter. You know, once it starts to hit 60, 70, this, this is not gonna go on forever. You know, this was very predictable. We talked about this a lot. Again, I was I was talking about how put options were like 5K minimum for a put option. But I was really thinking about it because I still thought it would play out, right? And everybody else did as well. And so if you find yourself wanting to get in these moves when they're way up here, again, you got to really think about like that, that, that mindset because that's a terrible idea. When something's up that much, when something's up hundreds and hundreds of percent, historically very rarely will it ever continue going up you know there's always going to be a breaking point where it's going to stop and when the higher you buy it it should be very obvious but the higher you buy it the greater the likelihood that you're going to get stuck in something like this right so like the higher you buy it the greater the likelihood that you're going to get stuck in its downfall and so again you should just never be buying up stuff that that's that's that extended i think people want to get rich but like you just got to be smart guys uh, yeah, so again, look at the Dixie break and then look at the spy rip up. So the Dixie broke, uh, you can kind of see the correlation there. There's the Dixie breaking, and then here is the spy ripping up. This must be some type of catalyst. Uh, let me see. So this must be some type of catalyst. Warner Bros is expecting lower adjusted EBITDA. Intel Foundry Services and Tower Semiconductor announced new U.S. Foundry Agreement. ECB Schnabel says dealing with financial risks is the core task of prudential supervision. The CME is going to launch T-bill futures as of October 2nd. Uh, S&P BRICS countries establishing a common currency in long term would be difficult given different level of economic development among members. The Fed's Waller says recent data will allow the Fed to proceed carefully. Recent data gives Fed space before making the next rate decision. Philip Morse files to sell five seven and ten year issuance um, yeah so maybe this is what it is the feds waller saying recent data will allow the fed to proceed carefully look at the look at the dollar index breakdown here look at the dixie break look at the spy rip TG, you're not the only one. I started losing on crypto and penny stocks only now after over a year of hard study. Am I finally getting consistently profitable? I'm not even against penny stocks. Um, I uh, like people get mad. Like most of the time, I think it, what happens is like people people spend all their time and energy learning penny penny stocks, right? And like they they deep down, I feel like they know that it's going to be very hard to ever make money trading penny stocks right like deep down i think they know but i think it's such a hard truth to accept that whenever i come out critical of that stuff whenever i come out saying hey penny stocks is in are incredibly predatory like most people are gonna just lose money like the courses are mostly nonsense and like it's just a scam market that hurts so much to hear that they end up just kind of lashing out at me and maybe i'm wrong listen it's very possible that like maybe i just suck at penny stocks 
you know, maybe I suck at penny stocks and like maybe despite all the scammers and penny stocks, there are some good ones. I think there are. But like, again, I I got to be honest and that's my bias. And maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think I'm, I'm just biased or y'all think I'm actually wrong? Or do you think I'm actually right with penny stocks? What do y'all think? Yeah, Fed's Waller is talking right now. Um, again, you can see this up right now. He says recent data will allow the Fed to proceed carefully. Recent data gives Fed space before making the next rate decision. Here's the Dixie bouncing up a little bit. So again, here's the dollar index bounce. This will generally make the market fall down if the Dixie keeps moving up. The, uh, the SPY or the S&P should move down with it. Right? Yeah, thank you, Angel. We appreciate it. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm right. Again, I might be wrong. I don't know. I'm not trying to be like definitive. Like I, I know I'm right. I just, again, I have a habit of trying to protect traders. You know. Like my job is to protect traders, and that's what I want to do is protect traders. You're right, right on penny stocks, John. Yeah, I think most people here understand what I'm saying and like understand that like, you know. Most people know. All right, so there's the dollar index bouncing and the SPY is bouncing up a little bit too. Yeah, so guys, so here's here's something that I'm interested in, in looking at. This is like one of my trade ideas that I've been trying to have a look at this. Okay, so from what I gather, right, I've been doing some research on solar, all right, on solar panels specifically, like door-to-door -door solar panel salesmen, door-to-door -door solar sales. What companies revolve around that industry? All right, because my guess is that moving forward, we're going to see a lot of weakness in solar. I think people are starting to massively wake up from getting taken advantage of by door-to-door -door solar salesmen. And I think that might be pretty bad for solar stocks, right? But again, let me know, do y'all have any like specifically solar panel stocks? Like stocks that the the what they do is they install solar panels on people's homes, right? Name some stocks that do that. Because again, from my understanding, and the SPY ripping up right now, the Dixie breaking down some more. SPY holding at the VWAP, bouncing all the way up almost to the previous closing price. And this, you can see the SPY is kind of flat right now. Um, the, the spy is kind of flat right now. It's kind of choppy sideways. Um, if you guys, uh, if you guys know any stocks that are based around those, let me know because that, those are stocks that I'm looking at. I think there might be some opportunity to short those stocks. Uh, is ENPH is in phase energy that is that what ENPH is? FSLR. PSNY is Polestar. Is ENPH that? Because I'm actually holding a little bit of ENPH, but it's a small position, but I am holding some. And so again, I'm wondering if... Uh... There's no opportunity to short solar there, like five-year lows. Aren't you the guy that said Meet Kevin was talking smack about me specifically, and then when I asked you for proof of it, you just never said anything back? Um, it's crashing, basically. Is it really? Uh, 
So FSLR, I get his ENPH deals with commercial. Okay. And, and what and how? Okay. So again, I'm in a little bit of ENPH, but it's a small position. I see solar week. Again, I think you got a lot of people like door to door salesmen that are selling solar, but I, I think, I think people are starting to wake up. I've seen a number of YouTube videos talking about, talking about that type of stuff lately. Like a lot of them, you know? Six step up transformers and you can power the neighborhood. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out ENPH. Is ENPH? Let me see. All right, so end phase energy. Cali-based energy tech company with 17.5 billion market cap delivered minus 51% return since this year. Solar microinverters and energy storage solutions. Okay, yeah, I want to get out of ENPH and I'm just going to cut this trade. I just don't trust solar at all. Um, so I'm just going to cut ENPH. I just don't trust solar at all. door to door some of it yeah so maybe i'm already missing out yeah pew pew it costs like 30 40 grand to install one on your house like people that's my problem with that industry is that like people are financing these things right so like people are financing solar like the problem is that Okay, the problem with solar companies is that people are going to door to door selling solar panels, right? But they're what they're doing is they're wholesaling it. So like they are charging people who they go door to door huge fees to do it. Like they're doubling the cost of it, right? So they might go to a wholesaler and get the solar stuff for like 30k, right? And I'm not sure if these are the correct numbers, but this is basically what they do. They get the solar panels for 30k. They go to door to door and they sell it to naive consumers for 60k. Right. And what happens is that they're financing this. So their monthly statements go up obscene amounts. Like a lot of the time, like they sell you on it, like, oh, it's cheap. It's cheap. You know, this is going to save you so much money. And when people get the bill, the bill is actually higher than it was before. If you include how much it costs to finance this. And a lot of these deals are financed for like 10, 15 years. So it's like, what is the purpose of this? Like, it seems like a scam market. And maybe I'm wrong. Again, I don't I don't freaking know. But like, it seems to be something where it's propped up on sketchy door-to-door -door salesmen, you know, and I've heard a lot about solar door-to-door -door salesmen. And again, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know what you guys think in chat. But I think there might be, you know, I think solar stocks have taken a hit over the last year. And I think for good reason, I've seen a lot of videos, a lot of content posted about these sketchy door-to-door -door solar salesmen and how it never works out in the person's favor, right? And I, I'm sure we got some people here at home that are like, hey, I bought solar panels and maybe, and again, confirmation bias is so strong. It's like, you know, you're probably paying much more now than you were before if you include the financing fees and all that stuff, right? So, but I think people desperately don't want to feel like they were taken advantage of. It's what these salesmen rely on. Um, but again, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. 
solar market is legit in Europe and so on, but it seems like the US managed to make it sketchy and unreliable. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I really don't know. I'm just kind of, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about the same stuff, solar tech sometimes. Oh, it seems like, oh man. Oh, now I, I honestly, bro. <laughs> Of course you're upset about it. Your name is Solar Text. Hey, listen, I'm not hating on it. Again, maybe I don't know. Maybe there's stuff I don't know about. Like, maybe I'm wrong here. And if I am wrong, again, let me know. Again, I really don't know. Uh, again, I might be wrong. Uh, I'm not afraid to admit I don't know something. Uh, and maybe I just don't know this. Um, maybe I'm just wrong. Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about the same Maybe it stuff. is a good market. Maybe it's not a scam market. Again, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah. All right, look at the look at the spy back over 450.50s. It's at 450.70s. I'm still watching the dollar index. The dollar index is still bouncing back. All right, we're at uh. Quad witching in two weeks. Mm. Hmm. A company wanted my buddy to sign over their $500,000 house as collateral. PV panels is a... Yeah. There we go. We put the music back on. Uh. All right, so again, dollar index still dropping down. Spy mostly flat over the last few minutes, really back since like 8.45 or so. It's almost 9 a.m. right now. So it's almost 9 a.m. All right, let me catch back up with the chat. Sorry, I've been kind of working on some other stuff. All right, catch it back up. You can probably shoot the heck, yeah. Face six step up transformers, you can power the neighborhood spirit era systems. 
wind solar EVs. Yeah, it costs 30K or more to install solar in your home, which is just crazy. Like, why would you ever do that? Like, who, who is getting talked into buying this? Okay, like, seriously, like, who is actually getting talked into buying this? Like, genuine question, right? Bro, these guys could come to me and sell me on solar. Like, one time I actually had them almost in my house, right? Like, I was at a, I was at a charity poker event, you know? And like, bro, I had kings versus queens. I had queens. Somebody else had kings. We went all in, and they won. But this other solar guy was like, hey, we're providing free buy-ins if you schedule a solar appointment, you know? <laughs> and so I remember I was like, hey, I'll schedule one. You come to my house and try to sell me on solar. And we were like, all right, done. And I got my free buy-in. I ended up uh, busted out anyway. But like, I was just kind of like, fine, y'all can come to my house. Eventually, I canceled the appointment. I was like, I'm too busy. I got to cancel it. So I just got my free buy-in. Never let them come to my house. But that was the closest I've ever been to getting stuck with solar stuff and again anybody that's mad about me talking about this is probably involved in the solar industry like we we've talked about this before but we've never gone super in depth with it and uh again i think it's an interesting thing especially when it comes to stocks right like there's a lot of solar stocks out there in the market and if people start to wake up to how sketchy this is they might have some dips in markets. They might have some pullbacks. Uh, but again, I might be wrong. Maybe there's another dynamic. I don't know about it. But like, who's getting talked into this? Like, who is like, who's going to say, hey, let me finance solar panels for over $30,000 for my home. And it's going to take me years to pay this off. And I'm going to have to pay. I'm going to pay much more than I would be paying now just to pay off the solar panels for years and years and years. Like aside from that, homes depreciate uh, or not. They're not going to homes usually appreciate. Okay. Let me, let me clarify. Homes generally appreciate, but as your home ages, you know, it, 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 I don't know if it'll be justifiable. Solar is heav heavily subsidized by the government. A crash may just be result in more funding. So yes, uh, it's, uh, it's 89. You're not going to comment on the meet Kevin thing. Um, let me see. I did solar back in 2016, bought it outright. We got, we get paid the tax rebates. We get paid what the system generates and we get paid for, I'm in Massachusetts already paid off. Maybe I'm wrong gangster. I don't know, dude. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, again, it's possible. I'm wrong. I don't know. Most companies lease their panels to customers. They were making profit by selling the energy. Maybe quad witching in a couple weeks. Look, solar energy is amazing, but until they make the tech cheaper where the consumer isn't paying for it for the rest of their lives, it's kind of useless. hundred percent. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to get a green September branded. Maybe you guys ever get wind over there in the U S no, we don't. What's wind. I don't even know what wind is, bro. Wind. What is that? Uh, John, what are your thoughts on Disney? I think Disney's down a lot, but as Disney dips, I kind of DCA into it. Um, so like, I'm I'm in Disney. It's not a huge trade, but like, we're we're not down a ton. I think our average is like 84s. So we're right around 81, 50, 82s right now. So it's like we're watching it, but it's a long term trade. If September CPI is positive, I feel like we'll see some big runs. Maybe I, I think. I think there is the nuance of September slump, though, and I think that's going to make uh, a lot of people skeptical to go big in the market this month because it's it is September, and historically September is a bad month for markets. But again, maybe I'm wrong. My sister is a door-to-door -door solar salesman. When she told me, I was like, seriously, she hasn't made anything yet, but it sounds like a huge ripoff. Maybe again, it could be. I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, Yeah, then when you need a new roof, you got to put in more money. A lot of people lease, then you get nothing in Massachusetts. We get paid quarterly. Hmm. Yeah, again, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, we ended up making a bunch from Apple, but from Google, 
from uh, NVIDIA, from PayPal, from Microsoft, from Snapchat, Target, Tyson Foods, Walmart, ExxonMobil. I'm still waiting for my dividends though, bro. I was supposed to get divvies in. I think I was supposed to get divvy divvies in Honeywell. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. You, Serpa, you said meet Kevin, talk smack about me, is what I'm referencing you for. And then when I asked everybody else, they were like, I've never heard him, you know? And so maybe he did, but like. Did he talk smack about me specifically or like, how does that work? You know, solar is good for big cities with higher energy costs. My brother has solar in Cali, saves him 500 a month. <laughs> All right, guys, we got like 25 minutes or so, 25 minutes. Again, it's a slow day. We don't have a lot of economic releases today. Yeah. yeah i mean what's funny though and again i don't know if he was right or not but what's funny is like i've been more correct about the market than a lot of the big time guys you know like a lot of the big time guys have been basically telling you the market was going to crash for years and i think that's where a lot of this comes from is like I've been telling you guys the same thing, which is that the market doesn't have to crash. And in fact, it's actually much more likely that the market goes up. And I've been telling you guys that for a year or two now. And in that period of time, the market has ripped up big. You know what I mean? Where a lot of these other big time YouTubers are telling you crash, market's going to crash, it's going to crash and burn, mostly from bias, right? Uh, I think, you know, I think a lot of it is politics related. But again, understand, like we've been right about the market for the last year plus when everybody else said the market was going to crash. And so, you know, my channel is called Beginner Trading just because we help new traders. We're just a resource and community. Um, and so just understand, like, who's actually been right about the market for the last couple, for the last year plus. Um, yeah, I heard about Burning Man Festival. Did they, did they really, Eli, slash solar rates? Yeah, I mean, market's pulling back. Uh, nothing too crazy is going on right now. Yeah, we got Walgreens that's up a little bit today. I'm wondering if they pay out divvies. What happened to LSU? Fans wanted to get rid of the coach now. Yeah, I mean... I think number one, Florida State's just good. I think Florida State's just good. All right, so look at the Dixie bounce back up. It's at 104.60s. Uh, so I think Florida State's just good, number one. Uh, number two is like, I think we had some bad play calls. And I don't think, I think people put all this hype into Jaden or Daniels. Uh, people put all this hype into Daniels, but I don't think he's as good as people have been saying. I think he chokes under pressure. He gets he gets emotional and he he ends up performing pretty poorly under pressure. Uh, and I think um, I think he looked weak yesterday as a quarterback, or su uh, Saturday as a quarterback. I think he looked weak. Yeah, everybody's acting like we were going to go undefeated. I don't know if that sentiment's ever good. You know, I don't know if uh, people uh, having that sentiment's ever really good. You know.
In terms of economic data this week, guys, so we do have some data coming out this week. It's nothing big. Uh, tomorrow we've got services and ISM non-manufacturing data. Tomorrow we got the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. Thursday, typical Thursday, jobless claims, non-farm productivity. Uh, and then Friday, nothing, basically. I don't think we have the, the big stuff dropping this week specifically, guys, is going to be earnings. We've got C3 AI earnings tomorrow as well as uh, GameStop earnings tomorrow. So pretty big release of earnings here. Um, but yeah, GameStop earnings tomorrow. Pretty big release here, in all honesty. Pretty big release. Uh... But yeah, GameStop earnings tomorrow, pretty big release. Um, tomorrow, we also have C3, which is going to influence all of AI, including NVIDIA. And so that's one that you want to watch. Specifically, it's symbol AI. Uh, if you look at symbol AI, again, this is earnings for an AI company that's pretty big. It's probably one of the biggest AI companies out there right now. Uh, and so, but what I see from the market guys today so far is choppiness. Like it's pretty choppy in the market right now. Again, here's the spy today. We're right around the previous closing price, but like one of the ways you can differentiate choppiness from volatility is where the stock is relative to the VWAP, the volume weighted average price. The VWAP is a trend indicator. And so when the market's going like this, chopping over and under, over and under, over and under the volume weighted average price, it generally means there's no trend or if there is a trend, it's sideways. And so it's not really like the best movement here. Um, and so, yeah, just be smart, team, be smart. cousin's wife is from louisiana she graduated from lsu yeah i'm from louisiana as well it's a big it's a big uh, college city so like everybody from there roots for lsu and the saints saints are kind of a little bit less lsu is bigger than the saints i would say in terms of like the amount of people rooting for them the saints are kind of new orleans and like i root for the saints personally but lsu everybody roots for them regardless of the went to lsu i didn't go to lsu but like i root for them because it's kind of my state's it's my state's team you know People call it quarter three crash since late 22. Don't know if this narrative holds, who knows? Yeah, I mean, again, maybe we get dips. I think the market has mostly pushed up over the last year, right? So if we look at the market, here's the yearly chart. You know, so there's the yearly chart. We're up to 450s. We'll see if we hold, I don't know. We got about 15 minutes until the market opens and we're gonna keep it pretty short and sweet today. Again, we just don't have much going on. Also, if you haven't already, check out Top Step. Top Step is a funded account program for futures where they give you a demo. They test your skill. We're going to be day trading on there today as well. And again, Top Step's inherently useful because uh, what they do is they give you a demo and they test your skill. And so if you're a new trader, most new traders lose money, right? So you can either put up the money yourself and lose that, or uh, you can try a funded account program, have noticeably you know, less entry like a noticeably smaller entry fee like it's much cheaper to put up you know 50 bucks 49 dollars for top step and to be fair i always i'm always honest about this and i try to be as transparent as i can with everybody and that most traders lose money and, and top step's no exception most day traders lose on top step but that's kind of the point is that it's a lot cheaper to trade on top step than it is to put up the money yourself and in the end if you lose top step it's not the end of the world you're down 49 bucks if you pass it what they do is they give you a demo and they test your skill if you can hit the target on their demo while following their rules and conditions, they fund you between 50K up to 150K with a 90% split and you get to keep your first 10K at profit. And so it really is a way to have a, a smaller risk amount, but uh, a smaller risk, but the reward is pretty similar. So the reward again is uh, you get 90% split once you're funded. And so I think that's that's genuinely useful. And again, for me, I would rather put up a lesser amount when I'm first getting started. If I lose, it's not the end of the world. But if I pass it, I still get 90% split. I still get to, uh, you know, I'm still close to getting what I would do if I put the money up myself, but just less risk. But again, they are a sponsor of mine. I'm certainly biased in their favor. Um, 
you know, because they pay me money. And so of course I'm biased in their favor. But again, I just think it's genuinely useful. If you want to day trade and you don't have the money to put up yourself, which it, I think is, you know, even if you do have the money to put up yourself, if you don't want to risk that, if you want to get exposure, have some pressure, still learn how to trade uh, under pressure, but with less risk, in my opinion, then check out Top Step. Here's the link. Great way to help support the channel. A question about September. Historically, the market does dip in September. So September is generally a pretty bad month for markets. Uh, I think the average loss in September is one to one and a half percent. And again, here's the Dow. The great thing about the futures is I can trade the E-mini. Uh, so here is the E-mini, which is the S&P 500. I could also trade the NASDAQ, which is NQ. Let me let the NQ load a little bit. I'm not sure what's going on with you. We'll put up the E-mini here. Focus on the NQ later. Choppy open though uh, for futures. Choppy market this morning. There's just not really big, uh, like a big edge showing up in markets today. Yeah, and again, guys, remember, we're kind of an economics channel. And so today we don't have any economy data. We don't have any economic data, any market data. It's all pretty flat and neutral today. Uh, no economic numbers, no big reports. I don't think we have any big earnings either today. Earnings season doesn't really start until mid-October again. We got America's Cart Mart, Brady Corp. We got Zscaler, Get Labs this evening. Again, tomorrow's the, the big ones. Tomorrow in the morning, we have Express, which is kind of like a meme stock almost with like uh, when GameStop originally ran Express and like Zoss headphones were one of the big ones that moved. Again, we're also going to trade some stocks at the opening bell also. The dip, sell the market pump. Yeah. So let me check this out. Let me get rid of all the pre-market stuff. AMC, guys. We'll see what AMC does today, too, man. AMC will be fun to watch. Thank you. 
All right, guys. So, let me check other stuff. Here, let's see. Yeah, so we're going to be day trading the opening bell. There's the E-mini on the left. we still got about nine minutes here until the market opens. Yeah, so we're going to try to day trade on TOS a little bit today, too. So we're going to try to day trade on TOS a little bit today. See if we have some good numbers in terms of day trading. We're also, be, uh, again, we're going to be day trading futures as well as stocks today. So if you guys see any good plays in stocks, call them out because we'll try to day trade those also. Just do a little bit of a mix. Yeah, man. So Burning Man, people got flooded out at Burning Man. Yeah, I've never tried scalping oil. Reverse head and shoulders means takeoff right. I'm not really sure. Again, the market's very flat today too. We don't really have much going on in terms of economy data. It's actually just kind of a boring day. All right, so the world's largest crypto casino, stake.com was reportedly hacked for $41.3 million. All right, guys, six minutes. Spy popping back up. You can see the E-mini move back up a little bit. You can see the Spy move back over the volume weighted average price. Yeah, so apparently the Burning Man Festival has stopped thousands of people for leaving. Like tens of thousands of people have been stuck at the Burning Man Festival. And everybody's kind of talking about it. They're saying it's finally starting to dry up now to where everybody's actually able to leave. But again tens of thousands of people have been stuck in the desert and that just does not sound like a fun thing uh you know it just does not sound fun to have a bunch of hungover coming down party goers and festival people stuck somewhere in the rain it's got to be the worst come down ever for some people over there and uh yeah look apparently they're finally able to leave now or some of them are finally able to leave but the whole world is kind of looking at that and laughing because uh, all these party goers and festival goers were just stuck in the desert afterwards uh, for days, you know, tens of thousands of people. So it's funny, but hey, let me know what you guys think. But yeah, I think you got to kind of laugh at it a little bit. Um, All right, so again, there we go. Let me put this back on. 
Glad they didn't run out of food and water. Crude made a nice move. Yeah, the market started to move up a little bit. My buddies are stuck there. Said the party just continued in the mud. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like fun, man. So all for that stuff nowadays, but we used to do the festival in the mud. I was never a big festival goer. Uh, Spy started to creep up though, so the markets are starting to bounce back a little bit. Meta's Facebook says in early December they will deprecate Facebook News, a dedicated tab for news content in the UK, France, and Germany. So the Teamsters Union reached a tentative agreement with Southwest Airlines for airlines material specialist covers more than 408, 480, at least 20 US IG bonds offering to expected, uh, are expected to price on Tuesday. So Aaron Paul mad that he's making zero dollars from Breaking Bad streaming on Netflix. The problem though is like, bro, y'all get millions of dollars up front. Like, like again, it just sounds like a bunch of babies. Like, listen, man, the whole purpose, like, okay, here's an example. All right. If I outsource a, a writer, right? If I pay a writer to write about a subject, right? And a ghost writer to write about a subject and they send me a finished work and I pay that ghost writer a thousand dollars right i might make more than a thousand dollars from that by publishing that book but it's my right to do so because i'm paying them the money up front that's what they understand they know that they're going to get paid a little bit for writing the book right they can't come to me and say hey i want royalties on that book no you relinquish the rights to me it's my work now like they understand that and actors who get paid millions of dollars crying about this because they want to make more money is just silly right? It's like, again, the technology is evolving to where streaming is taking over, right? What they should do is they should ask for more money up front. Like, that's what you should do. Don't ask to get royalties. Nobody's going to be okay with that, especially not Netflix. Netflix doesn't make enough money, really. I mean, they make enough money. Don't get me wrong. But like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Market opens about 20 seconds away. We'll see if we get anything good. All right, so there's the spy. Here's the opening bell. We're up to 245s or so on the spot or on Tesla, all the way back to green on the day. And then here's the opening bell team. Yeah, AI might replace him to a certain extent. But yeah, there's the opening bell. Tesla over the previous close. Markets look green, somewhat green at least. Not super green, but green enough. And there's the E-mini rip. Stocks are mostly red, it looks like today. What is Exxon, Exxon payout dividends? Walmart's still doing really well, my little 10 shares. Snapchat's still doing well, but again, mostly red market here. I'm going to go ahead and short this. We're going to take one contract short here. I just see a lot of stuff. Tesla did just rip back up, but uh, 
We're, we're gonna try to build up a cushion like we always do today, and then if we can, great. If not, it's all good. Very choppy open, not really a lot of price action here. We might be jumping in a little bit early on this trades too. But I just feel like we might break down a little bit. I think the market's up a lot the last couple weeks. It's the first day of September. And so we'll see if we get anything good. There we go, green. See if we break down. I'm oh, sorry, bumping my mic a little bit. Again, first day of September, market's up a lot. Tesla's starting to rise, though. We got to also watch it like NVIDIA. NVIDIA's going to influence the market a lot. It's down today, too. NVIDIA fell down initially at the open. Here we go. There we go. All right, so we just made a little bit under $100 cushion on the day. I had a feeling we were gonna drop. Sometimes intuition plays out, but that's our first little bit, bit of a cushion today. So we got somewhat of a cushion on the day now. We'll see what the NASDAQ treats us, or how the NASDAQ treats us. Again, market's pretty flat though. It is a very neutral day. I'm gonna reset my, my trading account here real quick. Oh, well, since I started this. For whatever reason, my NASDAQ trade wasn't pulling up. I probably should wait a little bit more time. I right, look at Tesla rise. NVIDIA is right at that VWAP level, that volume weighted average price level and starting to run. Look at Tesla up to 249s, 248s. SPY still pretty flat on the day here. You can kind of see it's neutral. Let my accounts load here. Again, SPY flat though. Started looks like it wants some legs. NVIDIA ripping back over that previous closing price too. So, or no, over that volume weighted average price open, over the opening high. So NVIDIA actually green since the opening bell right now. Not super green, but somewhat green. Previous closing price is 485 on NVIDIA. Disney starting to move up too. So we are starting to see some increases in price for some stocks. Again, we did buy American Express earlier this morning. All right, so there's the e-mini. We're back up and running here. Make sure my right account is up. There we go. E-mini starting to fall. I'm going to buy this again. Or I'm going to buy this now. Um, and I might add to it too. The reason I'm buying this is because I think NVIDIA is a good tell of the market. It's testing the previous closing price. So there's two contracts here. We already got a cushion of about a hundred bucks on the day. And so even if we lose here, we're still going to be pretty okay. Still flat on the day right now. Yeah. Tesla still rising, NVIDIA finally dipping down some. The question is, what do we think NVIDIA is going to do right now? As time goes on, we're going to get closer to closer to cutting this one. I'm just going to cut it. We're testing those lows too much. We're down less than a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, all good. Look at the NASDAQ. Is the SPY breaking down for sure? Again, my question is NVIDIA. What is NVIDIA doing right now? Yeah, is anybody else having problems pulling up the NASDAQ chart on Quant Tower? Like, look, I try to pull up the NASDAQ chart. I can't get it to pull up. Anybody else having issues? Here it is right here. Look at the Dow. But for some reason, NASDAQ's not really pulling up. I 
That looks a little bit better. Had to reset. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, look at Tesla here, though, guys. Wow. Tesla. No red candles this morning at all. Big dip in the E-mini. Big dip in the SPY. Disney actually green on the day, technically. That's nice. The rest of the market's just slumping down, though. NVIDIA consolidating now, too. Yeah, I bought American Express earlier. I'll take one contract here short, see if I can catch a breakdown, but... Again, kind of a sketchy market right now. Right, so we just made about 50 bucks or so. Scalped it. Watching NVIDIA closely. I don't know what, what's up with the NASDAQ. Let me try the micro NASDAQ. NASDAQ prints. Al looking really weak. I got a little bounce back up. I can see the spy bounce up. And Tesla, Nvidia, all kind of looking strong. Nvidia testing the previous closing price, trying to go green on the day. Apple down? Is it really? Yeah, Apple dragging the market down again. Nvidia starting to run back up though. Apple's not really down. It's just kind of. I mean, it's down on the day, but since the opening bell, it's kind of red. It's kind of flat. I mean. Again, watch NVIDIA, guys. Watch NVIDIA. We got ourselves back to basically flat on the day. We're in the the, the Dow right now. You can kind of see our, our trade of the Dow here. Let me go ahead and lock that in. So yeah, we're basically flat on the day now. We're down like 30 bucks. So again, maybe we'll get a little trade in the E-mini. I'm watching NVIDIA though. The problem with shorting right here is NVIDIA is starting to break high. So NVIDIA technically green on the day right now. NVIDIA technically green on the day. So I want to short, but I also watch NVIDIA test the previous closing price. I also see Apple start to rise. And so these are two very strong things. I'm going to buy this, even though it's kind of risky. I'm going to buy a piece. See if we can make a little bit. Um, again, I see an Apple rising towards the top of the range, even though NVIDIA is pulling back somewhere up a little bit here. $50 up. We're going to go ahead and cut that too. All right, so we're basically completely flat on the day now. It might rise up more. We also have to look at Tesla. Tesla at 252s right now. So, yeah, NVIDIA, guys, look at NVIDIA right here. NVIDIA testing the previous closing price just tapped the green level on the day. 
Yeah, I can't watch the NQ right now. I could put the NQ up on the on the um, bottom chart. Here's the NQ. Looks strong. Nvidia is trying to run up a little bit as well. I'm gonna buy a little bit more of Nvidia here, even though it's super freaking volatile. Um, all right, we're in. We're gonna get ten shares of Nvidia right here. All right, so we're in ten shares. Day trading Nvidia right now. Add a little bit more on this dip if we can, if we have time to. All right, so we're in 15 shares of NVIDIA. And right, there's 20. All right, there's 20 shares of NVIDIA right now. You see, we're already green in NVIDIA a little bit when you started the day. And I want to give it time. Like, I'm not going to add any more to it, but I do want to give it time to rip back up, which I think it can. I like that down wick too. All right, so we just bought the S&P at this low too. We might add a little bit more to it in futures. All right, so we got two contracts of the E-mini right now. I right, just took some profit off there, locked it in. Kind of green on the day now. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that in too. So we're slightly green on the day, I'll take it. We'll see if Nvidia can give us some green too. Mostly buying bottoms right now today is what we've been doing. All right, let's see if NVIDIA can rise up to the challenge as well and start to test that previous closing price. There we go. There we go. We're going to take half off there, just lock some profit into this trade. We got 10 shares left of NVIDIA. I want to see if it breaks. I'm not going to sell any right here. Uh, you know, we protected the trade a little bit already. Disney doing really well. AMC back up a little bit today, too. No, I'm trading futures. All right, so there goes NVIDIA testing that previous closing price. That previous close is a big spot. Uh... Again, I want to give it time to break. If it doesn't break, we're still going to be pretty much flat here for NVIDIA, so we're okay here. Um, you remember, we had some shares prior to this as well. So remember, we did hold some shares here at NVIDIA prior to this. So like we were in, which we were already red on the day on. We will cut this quickly, you know, right around break even on NVIDIA. If it doesn't hold the VWAP specifically, we're going to have to cut it because that's going to be a big down downfall. And I see it coming in here. So we're going to sell and just get out before this big breakdown, which I think everybody can kind of see showing up. So NVIDIA flushing down. So, yeah, we got out. I don't know if we got out break even or not. Uh, we got out somewhere around there. I'll tell you this. My stock portfolio is looking a lot better than it was 20 minutes ago. So a lot of stuff is actually up. This looks really weak, though, specifically on the NASDAQ here. Um, NASDAQ and the SPY both breaking down. But yeah, this looks really weak. So we're scalping the Dow as well right now here too, just to show you. We got Dow futures up. We're shorting up about thirty-five dollars on the remaining. Nvidia right back up there, so maybe I got faked out of that last little piece, but that's okay. Yeah, this is moving up against me too. All right, I'm going to cut this because I see the rise in NVIDIA happening. So we're actually still green on the day in stocks. We're not up a ton, but we're still green. But the reason I'm cutting this is because look at NVIDIA start to test that high again. Look at the NQ break over the VWAP here. And so regardless of what the E-mini is doing, this looks very strong.
Yeah, so again, I'm trading futures, so I'm, I can trade the S&P 500 in futures, the NASDAQ in futures, the Dow in futures. That's what you see. Uh, that's what you all see me doing. I'm trading on a funded account program called Top Step, where they give you a demo. They test your skill. If you can hit the target while following their rules, they fund you between 50 to 150K with a 90% split. Again, they're regulated. And so again, I, I, I asked my connect with Top Step. Some people um, were talking about this last week. I asked my connect with him. What he said was this. He said... Forex is the Wild West. Top Step is Futures, headquartered in Chicago, and they've been in business for 12 years, are in full compliance with CFTC and NFA regulations, and that Forex firms are the Wild West. But again, here, you can actually day trade the S&P, the NASDAQ, currencies, gold, silver, and futures with no PDT rule, and Top Step's the most legit funded program in the world where they give you a demo, they test your skill. If you can hit the targets while following their rules, they fund you between 50 to 150K with a 90% split, and you get to keep your first 10K in profit. It really is a situation where it's the best of both worlds, where if you lose, you're only down 49 bucks. If you win, you get a lot of the rewards that you would get if you put the money up yourself, just with less risk, in my opinion. So a great way to help support the channel. They are a sponsor of mine, so I'm definitely biased. If you want to check them out, here is the link. Great way to help support your boy here on this channel. Hello? All right, sorry, Carol calling me. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty slow day. I mean, we're green, but not very green, you know. Um, Nvidia still ramping up. Looks like I should have held some pieces there. But yeah, another one of the things I use is a company called Chart Prime. And Chart Prime is just really dope, man. Like, look at this. So this is Chart Prime. It's a trading view indicator service. And you can use these alerts on stocks, crypto, Forex, futures. And again, I use these a lot with these funded account programs. And I've been in, I've been funded in two of these accounts uh, over the last um, you know month or two. I've been funded in two of these accounts. But look at this. So they give you custom signals and alerts. And again, you can use them in stocks, crypto, Forex, futures. Like, look at how accurate these are. I can't guarantee you're going to make money or that these are going to be right. I can't guarantee you're going to profit or anything like that. They are a sponsor for mine. I'm biased, of course. But like, look at this, right? Buy signal here. And this is a five minute chart. So you got literal hours of upward movement after that buy signal here. Sell signal here, you get a couple drops for like 10 or 15 minutes. This one was wrong, but this sell signal here, you get like 30 minutes of drops after the sell signal. This buy signal here, you get like 20 minutes of bounces. This sell signal here, we've got really nice drops afterwards. And again, another one of my favorite ways to use it, and, and you can use chart patterns. Look, this rising wedge actually showed really nicely, and when it broke, it actually held, uh, which is really good. Uh, again, you can also use it on an hourly chart, which is slowly becoming my favorite way to use it a long term. I can set trading view alerts and have it give me alerts whenever stuff breaks or works on an hourly chart. And again, it can just be powerful if you use it right. And so again, look at how accurate this can be. Sell signal here, nice drops. Buy signal here, nice bounce. Buy signal here, nice bounce. Sell signal here, nice drops. Buy signal here, nice bounces. This one can be argued it was wrong, but buy signal here, nice bounces. Sell signal here, look at this. Hours and days of drops after that. Buy signal here, hours and hours of bounces. I can't fake what I'm showing you. And again, 40 bucks a month is pretty cheap for this. Check them out. Great way to help support the channel. They are a sponsor of mine. And so check them out. Uh, appreciate the love and support. Let me know what you guys think of the market today. I'll put this link up in the description if you want to check it out. I think I put the top step link up. Yeah, there we go. But again, they're both sponsors. So of course I'm biased, but check them out. Um, we got some dips here on the E-mini. Hear my baby puppy barking.
We got a little bounce. NASDAQ pretty flat. NVIDIA still looks like it wants to rise. All right, we got a little scalp on the Dow using chart prime just now. So we did get a little scalp on the Dow using chart prime. We've already taken some profit off. You can kind of see what we're up today already. Here we are up about... Uh, you want to see what we're up? We are up using... We're up about $178. We're up actually much more unrealized right here. Took a little bit more off just now. We are up about 220 or so on the day. Sorry if my puppy barking. I'm gonna let the rest ride. Again, we got that hourly alert on Chart Prime, which is what I'm kind of betting on here. So I'm gonna let one contract ride real quick. And again, if you want to check it out, link is in the description. With that said, though, guys, today's a slow day. We don't have any economic data. We don't really have much going on today. Uh, so I just wanted to trade a little bit just to kind of get my feet wet in the market today. It's just kind of a boring, slow day with not much going on. Uh, so I'll be back a little bit later, guys, as we always do. Y'all be safe in the markets. Again, remember, if you want to check out any of my sponsors, link is in the description. Uh, and my stock trades are doing okay today, too. We had some stuff doing really well, like Disney is doing really well. Um AMC has basically turned all the way around. So AMC was running, but basically turned all the way back around. Target's up a little bit today for me. Uh, Walmart's up. ExxonMobil is up nicely today, too. We got a little bit of gains in Snapchat. Microsoft is green. Remember, tomorrow we got GameStop and C3 earnings. And so I'll see you guys a little bit later. Y'all be safe. Y'all be good. And uh, yeah, my dog's barking. It's probably a good time to go hang out with him a little bit. I'll see y'all later. Love you all. Y'all hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow.